My name is Chris Wiseman and I'm the department head and chief operator of the Berwick Water Department. This is the water utility that provides water to all the people in Berwick who get town water as we call it. It's um, a three and a half person department and uh, we work 365 days a year. The plant itself built in 1999 uh, is not the same plant that was built because in the beginning we added just five chemicals. Now we add nine chemicals. Install a baffle system in here. And a baffle system allows us to add a chemical and give that chemical time to react. Now watch your step. I don't know if you can come around here, but if you can get pitches down there, those pieces of vinyl are almost like a mouse maze. So the water goes this way and then this way and then this way and this way and finally makes its way here. And that gives it enough time for the chemicals to react and serve their purpose. Uh, probably not gonna come in very good on a camera just going down there. But this is the first step before this water moves in to the treatment plant for further processing. Another issue that customers often ask about is, why don't you get a well? <laughs> wells are great, but wells are expensive and wells can have problems. It's just like a, a river water source, but um, we're happy to look for water. We looked back in the middle 90s and there was nothing that was less expensive than building this plant and using the river water. It may have changed. This water that I just showed you there is moving through pumps and in here it's mixing with chemicals that we add to it. If you can look behind here, here's where we inject specific chemicals. At this point there are coagulants and polymers injected. And by the time they come up here and they move over here and they come down here and they go into this clarifier and on this side the execs and on this side it also goes over here and then down and into that clarifier and so we're down here coming up here before we go down here this is filled with uh, they're filled with filter beads and they all float and this screen under there is stopping them from coming up and over there and so when all these chemicals react they cause uh, particles to clump together it's called coagulation and when coagulation goes further along it's called flocculation and so you can imagine over here this is a clean filter but another couple hours this will look like this so all that is dirty and that flocculation is coming up most of it's being held below those beads. But now there's a time that is, it needs to be changed. So we need to do a flush. So I'm gonna go and turn this on. You can just put your camera right here. Okay. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna force air up. And it's all that flocculation that has taken place, it's gonna all break apart. Okay. And it's gonna go in here, and then it's gonna dump in there and go into our waste tanks. Okay. And then we will start fresh. So I'll be back in uno momento. Now you can see just in a minute, this will turn from this color into a much, much darker color as all the organic material is breaking off of those beads. Wow. And look, during this summertime, this is the hardest time to treat. This water will get black. And again, that's with the manganese, iron, and other organics out in the river. So how long does this take before you have to run this process? During the winter time, four hours, five hours. During the heat of summer, when there's no flow in the river and the biological activity, we're lucky to get two hours. Maybe 120 minutes, 160 minutes. So, uh, yeah, very hard to treat, but you can see, uh, this bubbles and breaks up for five minutes, and then the raw water comes in and pushes all this water up and dumps it in there for another maybe eight minutes. 
And then once that clears, that stops, and the treatment comes and starts over here. Now, I did say that the water comes in here and it comes up here. And then it moves over here. Maybe we look over here at this one because now that it's over here, it's going down. And this is probably four, five feet of media that's anthracite on top, and then it's uh, sand on the bottom and some um, uh, garnet. garnet. Uh, uh, let's see. So it's going down here. Um, Everything that is trapped here and moves over here and now is getting pushed down through here, it, tr it gets trapped by the sand and the anthracite and the g garnet. And most of it gets trapped anyways. Uh, let's see, you can obviously see how dark that is. And we get rid of that and not put it in our system. The water that we make and send to town is not necessarily the same water you get in your home or business. Things happen to the water after it leaves the plant. We try to take these things into account, but unless you tell us what you're seeing, we won't know it. Sometimes it may taste funny or look funny. We need to know that because there's no other way we can know it's happening. So if you get a chance, send us an email or Give us a phone call. Hi, here's Star. Hello. Oh yeah, if anybody wants to get a hold of us, we do have a Facebook page, uh, Berwick Water Department. Um, we also, I, I asked to keep everything polite. Star has been here about almost seven years? 2011. So, oh, maybe getting close to eight years. I started working here as a meter reader. Yeah. <laughs> Part time. Uh, Star has passed her class four certification exam, which is required to run this plant. There are four levels of testing and our plant is so complicated that the state classifies it as a class four plant and you cannot run it without a class four license if you're making individual decisions about it. She was able to work here for years and learn things working with us and, if necessary, asking what needed to be done. Uh, I have been working on my Level 4 license for six years. You need at least five years of experience before the state will allow you to have that license unless you have prior training in other fields. I don't know, 12, 12 years of college in me, granted part-time. I'm Bachelor of Science in Environmental Earth Science, 3.9 GPA. I thought I was going to be uh, on a glacier somewhere, to tell you the truth, and uh, instead it's water treatment. A but different. A little different. And how long have you been here? I've been here almost 15 years. 15 years. And do you have to take off all the studies at all? You have to keep your licenses up, which means you have to get a certain amount of credits every year to satisfy it. Actually, it's every two years the licenses need to be renewed. So this is the back side of the filters. This was the one that was flushing, and this was the cleaner one that I showed you. Now I told you the water goes down, and the water goes down. It comes down and into this pipe, and then goes this way. And the same on that side, goes down through that pipe, and over here, and over here. And from here, it goes down and drops downstairs into our contact tank, which was very similar to the raw tank out there with the mouse type maze things yep. to allow the chlorine contact time to disinfect the water. Yeah, it goes to our analyzers, which analyze chlorine, uh, potassium permanganate. It analyzes our turbidity levels, which are amphilometric turbidity, turbidity units. Um, and uh, that's all required by the uh, state. It's a requirement. We do a lot of our controls through this uh, computer interface here, uh, which is picking up uh, data from the plant and uh, it allows us to change uh, what's happening. All these screens are kind of the same. They all give you different information, but it helps us so we can handle running the plant either remotely or from the office. Um, and when something goes wrong, we can go out and try to figure out what that is. Or what's going on in the filters? Yes, these are these are turbidimeters. Okay. 
this one, this was an older one, and since they've been updated, so all the information is actually on this one. That's the turbidity over there. That's the turbidity here. So separate turbidities, but upgraded. Um, this is a valve to stop water going this way. That valve stops it going this way. Okay. This is an analyzer wall, one of them. This shows us the amount of free chlorine that is in our clear well. A clear well is where we store water right before it goes out into the distribution. Um, this is a turbidimeter. This tells us raw water. This is a, a streaming current monitor. That senses the electrical charge in the water and adjusts the chemicals accordingly. A automated. This is our potassium permanganate analyzer. That's the new one to take care of, uh, to know what we're putting out in our raw well here. And this is a total chlorine analyzer that shows us how much we're putting out into the system. A pH meter. We do everything here. That is, we go out and read meters. We fix uh, breaks in water mains and we run the plant. And it's not true except in small water departments. How much water we use depends on what they do, which is the people we give it to. Right. So we don't have very much industry in here. So the only people that are really using it are um, just your daily civilians for the most part. Um, maybe places like the uh, recreation field during the hot summer, they uh, use a lot of get water for irrigation and stuff. Um, during the winter, we don't use much water because people don't use much water. But on hot summer days, we have to stagger how long we work just so we can keep enough water in a standpipe. Um, it's another thing, it's a small water system. And so we have that standpipe up on Pine Hill and then we have all the people up there on Fox Ridge and everything and uh, they notice the water pressure there. And if the standpipe, which is 80 feet high, gets any lower than 60 feet, they start complaining we got no water pressure and everything. Of course, down here, you're, we got way too much water pressure and everything, so it's, um, it's, a, it's a bit of a tightrope to walk, but we have 20 feet or so to play with. Much easier in the wintertime than it is in the summer. People have been alerted several times during our recent uh, billings about uh, disinfection byproducts, or HAA, haloacetic acids, which are a contaminant in the water. And as it turns out, we are now in compliance after our last test. Um, so that, that's great. The same goes for the manganese issue, which has proven to be a difficult one to perfectly solve. We work on it every day trying to get the data we need to make a choice to make it work better. But some of the manganese gets through the plant and you may see it as water which looks uh, gray or black and... Or even tea colored. Yeah, and let us know when you see this because we don't know. It was really amazing uh, on Facebook the last time this happened because I was getting real-time account of the water being a problem. It gave me an opportunity to find out where it was in the system, how long it lasts, and if our treatment techniques are working to get rid of it. And it, it was a really good tool. Um, as long as we can keep the comments nice. and <laughs> <laughs> We're in out there that I showed you. Um, that all has to be bought and up to date and inspected. Yep. This is serious stuff. We have to go to training. So on the other side of this wall is water. This was that raw well outside the building that I showed you. And so these two raw water pumps suck that water in through here. It goes up into here and it comes over here and it goes straight up and you remember that straight up pipe I showed you right in front of the filters. And then it does all its business up there. Um, 
what's up, this is the one that the flush, all that wastewater would go out into that front parking lot that I showed you. Ah, uh, I should have showed you the clear well. The clear well is here. I showed you the contact tank, which was over there. This is the clear well. The clear well is where it sits the last step before we start shooting it out to the distribution system. So these are our finished water pumps. These are our VFDs, which have been upgraded with variable frequency drive. Depending on how hard these pumps have to work to push the water up to the standpipe, they decide. So this water now, this water, these finished pumps, they're sucking that water up and they're putting it down this way. And that goes right outside, right to Rochester Street, takes a left and shoots right up towards Public Works. This is a pump we had installed for that back uh, recycle, recycling that I showed you. Those are spare parts in case uh, we get a main break. We have two for each size pipe. So we are prepared for an emergency. As a matter of fact, we did. We built the cement, we, built, we ordered the pump, and uh, I hands-on put all that together with Chris's help. Bit complicated, but uh, we had to do it. We had no choice. We needed to get a recycling system going. So this was that raw wells, I mean, the, the, the waste tanks outside by the parking lot that I showed you. And that water comes in through here, pump sucks it up here, it goes out here, we can put it this way, we can put it this way, but for recycling purposes, we shoot it right down there and it dumps into that raw well and mixes with the raw water. Uh, these are backflow preventers. This is one of my responsibilities. These need to be tested once a year. We have probably six here, but we have a bunch out in the system. Any restaurant, any automotive place, in any apartment unit with more than four units. This is a compressor. This supplies airlines, which open up all our pneumatic valves. These are two blowers. The flush you saw and all that air coming, these supply the air, the bubbles, air for those bubbles in the flush cycle that we saw. So two different forms of air. Uh, not much more here. I could. These are backwash pumps. Uh, and then I'd have to explain a backwash to you. And then things just get complicated. Last winter, we uh, did a, a total upgrade of the filters. Um, and that involved replacing the uh, sand and anthracite um, layers in the filter. And that has improved the operation. And there was also uh, sandblasting and painting just to prolong the life of the steel filters. And this was a, a time-consuming thing too, uh, but uh, needed after 20 years and it's helped us. The things we'd like to do, well, um, we'd like to have a circulation system in the water tank up on Pine Hill. You can see it alongside of Pine Hill Road if you're heading northwest. Uh, it's a blue-green thing, has 1.1 million gallons in it, and that's where we store the water we make so that if the plant isn't running, everybody still has water. It's one of the great things about having town water versus your own well. If the electricity goes out, you still got water. Um, yeah, our, our plant is, the town is fed by gravity uh, when the plant is off. Our plant only runs uh, as is needed. So usually on, on slow days in the winter, six, seven hours, and in the summer, sometimes up to 12, 14, 16 hours. Um, and we're lucky that um, we don't have to run 24 hours a day. This is our, this is our room for a fluosilicic acid. That's the fluoride we add to the water. And we add that for dental protection, mostly for children. And believe it or not, the amount that we add is based on the hottest day of the year, how much people drink in the hottest area of the year. And from that, they make the um, recommended dosage so that the most you could drink wouldn't hurt you and everything, because it is a bit of a, bit of a uh, this is our polymer room. 
We have um, our ammonium sulfate, which we add to the chlorine in the water to make chloramines, which disinfects the system out in distribution. Uh, polymers and coagulants to uh, aid in our filtration process. And always chemicals coming in to replace the ones we use. Because of the increase in rates, it became economical for us to treat our own wastewater and recycle it back into the system. It's a pretty good system, but we designed it and built it in just two weeks. So it's something that could be improved. Some of you might be familiar with uh, the um, uh, filter for a fish tank or a swimming pool. It's pretty much the same. The big difference is that what we want to take out of the river water is too small to be filtered through sand or something like that. We have to add chemicals that grab those little things, clump them together into a bigger hunk of stuff, and then we can filter that out. I know a lot of people ask questions about what sort of testing we do in order to make sure the water is uh, safe. Uh, we test there are some annual tests required by the Maine Drinking Water Program. The, well, the state does uh, come and do a survey of everything in the plant and all of our regulations and practices uh, in order to make sure that we have the capacity to produce good water. Um, that's every three to five years. We also do daily testing to figure out um, how well our system is working and what the characteristics on that day the river has, such as the pH. The US EPA <laughs> sets the standard and the main drinking water program uh, regulates us based on those standards.